Okay, so in this lecture video, we're actually going to be doing lecture 8.2, um, Banks Part 2, but that, that lecture video we're not going to use the, um, the notes for. In fact, I'm going to show you how to fill in the chart that's at the top of that page in your problem set using a, a quick spreadsheet here to show you the numbers. So, um, so this spreadsheet, and, and I'll just kind of call it L8.2 Banks Two. Um, this refers to the the same numbers that are actually in your in your problem set. And what we're going to learn in this in this in this lecture is just quickly how banks create money. And the, we we have to understand that banks create money as part of the lending process. So we knew from the last video that that banks create money, uh, or sorry, that banks loan money in order to earn a profit. But what we'll find in this video is that when they loan out money, that actually creates new money. So the first thing is that that I give you a scenario where the banking system in which banks hold 10% of the money that gets deposited and they loan out the other 90%. And that all the money that gets loaned out, the new loans here, becomes a new deposit um, in the next time period. So, so what we're going to say is here, I'm going to type a formula equals F2. And, and it's going to continue as I drag the cells. And basically what it says is that imagine that you deposited here $1,000 from cash. And so first question for you is, is that money already in the money supply or is it new money? And the answer is that money that, that was deposited in cash is already in the money supply. And so the total amount of deposits in the system is now $1,000 because you're the only depositor. And the bank has to hold 10% in reserve. So the total amount in reserves is $100. And the bank loans out $900. So the total amount of loans is $900. Now, when they loaned that out, imagine that the, that the person who they loaned it to went to a cookie store. And they bought $900 worth of cookies with their, with their loan. And the cookie store owner took the $900 dollars and deposited it into their bank account. So now we have total deposits and we'll say the sum of B2 through B3 here. And so it's $1,900. $1,900. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that number in there so that if we drag it, it'll keep going. Now the bank has to hold 10% of this new deposit so 0.1 times B3 in reserve. And so that's $90 of this 900. But the bank has now uh, a sum of that 100 and the new reserve 90 for 190. So the total reserves that banks hold is 190. Now they get to loan out 90% of this 900. So equals 0.9 times B3, and that's 810. And again, here, and I'm just going to copy and paste that cell, um, these two loans combined are 1710. So the $900 that they already loaned out plus the 810. And now after the second time period, the amount of money in the system is $1,900. Notice that it, it's not just your $1,000 in cash, it's $1,900. And of that, some of that is new money that the bank created by lending, and that was the $900. So now we're going to take a look at what happens here in the next couple of rounds. The next couple of rounds. And we'll see here, I'm just kind of checking that, in fact, the numbers look accurate, and they do. Um, some of that means my formulas worked. That the, this next round, the loan becomes $810, and so the total deposits are 1,900 and 810, and that's 2710. And the bank has to hold 10% in reserve, and so their total amount in reserves is all three of these added together. And then they loan out 90% of 810, which is 729, and so the total amount of loans is 2439. That new loan in T period four, $729, means the new total deposits is 3,439. And the new amount in reserves is 10% of the 729. And then there's new loan, which is 90% of the 729. And now we're gonna do one more, one more 
time period. And, and it, as you're writing these down, I would suggest you can round some of these numbers if you need to. In fact, it's storing lots and lots of other decimal places so that this is a very accurate number here. Um, but it is rounded to the cent. So you could feel free to round it to the dollar if you want. But as we are writing the last couple numbers here, I want us to notice some patterns that are happening in these columns. Right? The patterns in these columns. And we can look and see that the new deposit numbers, these numbers, and these numbers, the new reserve and the new loan, they're getting smaller. Right? And that's kind of what separates us from animals, is we can do some pattern recognition. And total deposits, total reserves, and total loans are getting bigger. But at some point, the new deposit is going to depend on the new loan. It does every time. At some point, this new loan, the 90% of the previous deposit, is going to reach zero. Right? That's going to come to zero. And if the new loan eventually comes to zero, then that means the new deposit will eventually become zero. It'll become zero in the very next time period. So once in, say, T period N, if it's zero for new loans, in T period N plus one for the new deposits, it would also be zero. And so what we're going to find is that is that eventually these total deposits numbers, total reserves and total loans, will stop growing. And in fact, we can see they're growing less and less every single time. And, and this is our growth rate. And you, so you can see it's slowing down. So I'd, I'd like you to make a prediction here now. And, and of course, we can't interact as we make this prediction. But make a prediction about how much do you think this total deposits and total reserves and total loans is going to be. And, I, and I'll give you a hint. This first number, the 1,000, the 100, and the 900, there's another interesting pattern that you can start to notice. Um, but, but your hint is, and I'll tell you the pattern in a second if you haven't spotted it already, your hint is that the, the maximum amount that the total loans will be and the maximum amount that the total deposits will be will be some multiple of this original number of the 100, the 900, or the 1,000. Now, the, the last pattern, and, the, and some students notice it right off, and, and some don't until it's pointed out, take a look at the relationship of columns total reserves, total loans, and total deposits. And if you add these together, you get total deposits, which it shouldn't be really that, that amazing, but, but actually, as you continue, you'd find the sum of $409.51 and 3,685 $3, Right, gives you four thousand ninety-five and ten cents, and so that's because necessarily the new reserve and the new loan added together has to be the new deposit. So it it should make sense here. So hopefully you've made a prediction about how much this total deposits and total loans will grow to, because what it's going to tell us is at the end of the day is how much money's in the bank, is in the total is the total deposits, and the maximum amount for the total loans will tell us how much new money has been created. Because every single dollar that's lent here is a new dollar that's been newly created. So let's take a look here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extend this down, and let's see if it's maybe, oh, uh, let's see what happens after 10 time periods. No, it's still growing. Not as fast, right? Each deposit's about $400. So let's go down to maybe the 40th. No. Oh boy, it's still growing. So. 9,835, 8,852, so it is still growing. Let's go down to 100. Oh, it's still growing. We're making, now we're doing loans of three cents, and so time period 100 should have a three cent new deposit. And 130, it's still growing, actually, even though it says the new loan is zero, there's actually still, still some fractional pen, pennies in there. Until we get down to here, and you will find that the total deposits column should hit 10,000, and the total loans is 9,000, total reserves is 1,000. And this, this number, $10,000, 9,000, and 1,000, is, is what it would be the maximum amount. So let's, let's do hide some of these, hide some of those. And you can see here that eventually these numbers go to 9,000, this goes to 1, and this goes to 10. This is not a, a surprise. In fact, it's because this, this amount, $1,000, multiplied by something called the money multiplier. The money multiplier is how much we're going to get. And, and the money multiplier is actually quite simple. 
And notice here 900 times something gives us 9,000. So clearly from this example, the money multiplier, the number that this 900 is multiplied by to get this 9,000 is 10. So how do we get 10? Well, 1 divided by the reserve ratio equals the money multiplier. That reserve ratio, we said in this problem, oops, equals 0.1, or 10%, or 10%. And so once we know this is 10%, that the bank has to keep 10% in reserve, then the money multiplier can, can change accordingly. Um, and, and it's actually not, not too terribly difficult once we know that. So we could actually make a quick change here um, and see what would happen. The maximum amount that would change, say if we change this 10% to what if, what if it were 25%? So that means I'm gonna change this new reserve number, right, and see where it says 0.1, we're gonna change it to 0.25, and we're gonna change this one because now the bank can't loan out 90%, it can only load 75%. We're gonna make that change all the way down. And um, here, let's see here, let's see here, one times four. So, oh, I see what's going on here. We have to change all of them, all right? And so, all the way down, all the way down. So, B2, B4, oh, it's because the original loan, duh, 750 and 250. So, that's now, now we're fixed, right, now we're fixed. And so, I was trying to figure out we had way too much money here. So, here we can see, if the bank loans out 75% and they have to keep 25%, that eventually total deposits only go to 4,000. And to total loans, 750, go to 3,000. Because here we have four times 750 gives us 3,000. And then total reserves, that's supposed to be 250. Four times 250 gives us 1,000. Four times 1,000 gives us 4,000. So if it were 25%, the reserve ratio would be 0.25. One divided by 0.25 equals four, and so that would be the money multiplier. So now a couple of things in practice, right? First, and, and we're almost finished here. First is that this expansion of deposits and loans and, and reserves is, is a maximum possible change, what we've modeled here, right? This is not something that we'd see in practice. In fact, in practice, the money multiplier is way smaller, and the money multiplier is better defined as actually the ratio of monetary base divided by M1. Um, it's the ratio of those two things. And in fact, here you can see, or sorry, I think, I think I've got that flipped around. It's M1 divided by monetary base. M1 divided by monetary, and it's in your notes. It's, it's at the bottom of the page. And we can see here that the M1 money multiplier is actually right around one. It's a little bit north of one point, it's by 1.2 is what it looks like. Um, here towards the end of, uh, or 1.1, towards the end of February 2020. I mean, we can see that it used to be much higher. It used to be in the twos. It actually used to be really close to three back in the 1980s when I was a baby. Um, but, but generally speaking, it's only been about two to three, even though the money multiplier maximum possible change, actually this whole time, could have been 10. So because the 10% reserve ratio has held for, true for 40 years. And why is that? Why is the actual money multiplier so much smaller um, than what we would predict, right? Here, here we would say it would be 1 over 0.1, and that's 10. That's 10. That's a big number. So why is it only 1.5 or 1.2? And there's two quick reasons. One is that one of the assumptions of our little story is that all the money that the bank can loan out gets loaned out, that the bank doesn't hold any excess reserves. Um, and so if the bank does decide to hold excess reserves, then it can't actually um, create as much money. It, it doesn't create as much money. And the second reason why we, we don't see this happening it's to this extent is that people sometimes don't redeposit all the money, right? Here's the $750 being loaned out, and here's $750 being deposited. Here's $562 being loaned out, here's $562 being deposited, down to the last cent. But if people hold some cash, as they are wont to do, 
uh, then the new loan amount doesn't become the new deposit amount. And so there is not as much new money creation that can happen. So two reasons why, why it wouldn't necessarily expand as much is one is banks hold excess reserves and two is, is people hold some cash. Now the last thing um, th that I'm going to ask you in this whole lecture is this. Um, when, when you get a question on a test, and, and we'll say here you've got, um, here we've got all of these you know, expansion of money supply and all this stuff, it'll say, okay, you've got a 25% reserve ratio. Okay, so the bank holds $250 of the 1,000 and so forth. And Bobby deposits $1,000 cash. How much new money is created or how much does the money supply change? And, and what that's asking is not $4,000 because of that 4,000 that's now deposited accounts, 1,000 was already in cash, it already existed. So it's $3,000 in money supply change. Now the simplest way to find that answer is actually to go over here and look at the total loans. Because every dollar that is lent out is new money. It's brand new and so it's a change to the money supply. So anytime you see a question that says what's the change in the money supply, just think about what's the change in the total loans. And remember that if it's a deposit that's been deposited from cash, that that money was already in the money supply. So hopefully this helps you make sense a little bit of the idea of how banks create money, and I'll see you next time.